time uh, being joined by Dr. Fawad Zadi, Associate Professor, Faculty of World Studies from University of Tehran. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fawad. Uh, what are we looking at here? What is the situation at the moment? Uh, what more do we know at present? Uh, well, as you said, I'm in Tehran and uh, Iranians are quite happy when they heard the news uh, last night. Uh, many people came to the streets uh, celebrating because uh, the public opinion here wanted a response, response from the Iranian government to not only the consulate attack, but uh, the, a number of attacks that Israelis have carried uh, out against Iran in Syria and in other places. I think we have to look at uh, two questions. One. Did Iran have the right to respond? Uh, and the second is whether Iran uh, was uh, 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 made the right decision to use that right. The first question, I think, is obvious. When you attack a country's consulate, when you kill other countries' generals, uh, this is against international law. Uh, Vienna Convention, other uh, uh, international law relating to this issue, uh, say that countries are not supposed to attack other countries' consulates uh, with missiles. Uh, mm. So under international law, Iran had the right to respond. Uh, and the second question, whether using that right was, was the right choice or not, uh, is also positive because we have seen uh, the fact that if Iran uh, didn't respond uh, to the Israeli attack, these attacks would continue and expand. We know that who wants to expand the war, we know he wants to continue his prime ministership and that's the only way he can stay in power by expanding uh, the war. We know he wants to have a military confrontation between Iran and the United States. So, uh, but overall... But you do understand this, this direct assault on Israel uh, that has been uh, conducted by Iran is going to uh, have uh, major implications. It's, it's, it's risking a major escalation between the two nations and other countries of the world are going to be involved with the uh, ally, Israel's ally, US as well, uh, well uh, taking action now and warning as well Isra Israel uh, that, uh, uh, well, I beg your pardon, Iran, that it's going to take major action against the country. Well, that's a choice that the Americans should uh, make, whether they want to follow Netanyahu off the cliff or have a foreign policy that's actually working for the United States. It's a it, uh, foreign policy that is in line with uh, U.S. interests. Uh, Israel has been committing a genocide in Gaza. United States has been helping Israel in that genocide. This is not a good policy. Uh, in India, in Iran, all over the world, you see demonstrations against the genocidal regimes, both in Israel and Washington. And uh, this is a sad fact. Iran sent a message on the first day of, of the attack on the consulate telling the United States uh, not to get involved. It's not good for the U.S. to get involved in these type of issues. Uh, Israel needed to be punished. Uh, if Iran did not respond, Israel would have continued these type of attacks. And U.S. Uh, should take advice before attacking Iran. You know, United States has a lot of military uh, uh, pers personnel in this part of the world. So they, they are uh, uh, going to be victims. Uh, what is of Iran really? What is Tehran really preparing for? What is it looking at? This is a major escalation, as I've been saying it earlier as well. Uh, and uh, this is definitely uh, something that could disrupt the world order. What is uh, Tehran looking at here? Is it going to... Uh, continue these attacks because there is going to be a response from Israel as well. There is going to be a response from U.S. as well. You know, the world order uh, would have been saved if uh, Israel had uh, followed the U.N. Security Council resolution. You know, we had the United States vetoing uh, ceasefire resolutions at the United Nations three, four times and they abstained the last time uh, and that was passed. If Israel had stopped the genocide, we would not having this program today. If Israel had stopped killing women and children on daily basis, uh, an average of about 100 women and children on daily basis. It, it's sickening me, it's sickening you, it's sickening a lot of the viewers. So if they stop, if they had stopped the genocide, you would not have a world order disrupted. Uh, it's responsibility of countries to uh, stop genocide. 
it's a UN convention that uh, that it's it's uh, not only Israel this. actually that you're punishing here by uh, making such moves. The cargo ship now that has been seized by Iran. It has 17 Indians as well on board, and we do understand center. The Indian government is also in touch with Tehran on that. You know, India-Iran relations are quite good. I'm sure the sailors on that ship will be safe. Uh, they will be taken care of, and uh, it's not it's not going to uh, cause any harm. It's not going to have any problems with uh, with the Indian crew. Uh, Iran's uh, and India's relations are quite historical and. I don't think we'll see any any problems there. Uh, I I can add that mm. uh, investing in Israel by India or Pakistan mm. or any other country is not a good idea. Uh, working on Israeli ships is not a good idea. Israel is a genocidal state, and uh, having any type of links with a genocidal state is not a good idea.